Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Zon Academy. Today's webinar is Designing Premium Dentures in 3 Shade, and our presenter is Anush Emishkian. And Anush is an RDT, and she is a Zon senior trainer for our high-tech training team. And today, we're going to want an interactive uh, webinar with you guys. We want to know a little bit about you, so I will be launching two poll questions before we get started with our live design. Anush will also be taking questions at the end of the presentation, so if you wouldn't mind just typing them into the Q&A section at the bottom of your screen, we would appreciate that too. I want to welcome Anush. Thank you so much for preparing this beautiful presentation for us, Anush. Um, I'm going to turn it over to you. Great, thank you, Fran, for the quick intro. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more about myself. Uh, so I grew up within a family, both parents being dentists. I was highly encouraged to stay in the industry and um, do something related to dentistry. So I studied and graduated as a dental technician at age 19. And uh, to be honest, I was not very passionate about it until uh, I moved to Canada in 2004 and I saw the demand for dental technicians and the intro to digital dentistry was um, very uh, likely like in the big demand. So I went and I got my degree evaluated and uh, my credentials uh, evaluated and I became a registered dental technician in BC. And I got my first job uh, in a local mid-sized lab here, which they have purchased the one of the first uh, milling systems from then Supply Dignant. It was very basic to access mill. And we uh, miraculously managed to get like a coping done with uh, zirconia. So that was the beginning of CAD CAM there. After that, I decided to open my own dental studio doing crown and bridge and implant. And during that time, I was uh, teaching as a CAD CAM instructor at the CDI College, where I found my passion to train and uh, be uh, into digital dentistry products and integration. Uh, 2013 is when Zahn Henry Schein approached me to join uh, the first CAD CAM training and tech support team was launched back then in North America. So I was one of the first people on that team. So that's about it. I also enjoy hiking, biking, yoga, spend time with my daughter. So um, this is uh, jumping now into our webinar today where I'm gonna explain a uh, quick, uh, nice, easy demo on denture design using tree shape, it, which we can do it with a minimum effort and time. So I'm gonna close this slide and jump to uh, open my tree shape dental system. Great, so what I'm gonna do is launch our first question that we have for you all. So if you wouldn't mind taking a moment just to answer this poll, it's do you design in-house or do you outsource? I'm just gonna give this a minute for everybody to answer. And again, we appreciate you taking the time to do this and being interactive with us. So this is great, Anush, so far, I will let you know that 70% of our attendees do design in-house and 27% outsource. Oh, great. Okay. So I'm gonna end that poll and I'm gonna hit one more poll if you don't mind, Anush, before you sure. get that way. We know our attendees. And we'd like to know, do you design in three shape? And if so, are you a beginner, an intermediate, or an expert designer? How would you consider yourself? And especially beginner, intermediate, I mean, that's what we're here for. We're here to help you get proficient in designing, you know, for yourself, which is great. Well, this is definitely the course for you guys. And there's so far, we have 62% of our attendees are beginners, 31% consider themselves intermediate, and 8% expert. Excellent. So Very nice. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for doing this for us, everyone. And I'm going to turn this back over to Anush. 
Thank you, Fran. So uh, going back to here, uh, do you guys see my order form here, creating the order form? Yes. Awesome. So this is the dental system. Everybody's familiar with it. So I'm going to create a case for the digital venture. And I'm going to start here with the basic info that we input. So we start here with the operator name, last name, first name, the usual. And in here we have um, the model antagonist. And I also working today on the Dental Designer 2023, which is the latest. So I wanted you guys to see just, it, it's not much change from 2022, but it's um, the 2023. So we set up the order form as um, denture teeth here with the gingiva. And if I hover over the plus sign, we have uh, the material chosen here, Zon Denture Resin. And the important thing to mention is the type. I'm going to just spend a few minutes here explaining the type. So today I'm choosing base with design teeth. This will fabricate for us a two parts, two STL files. The base will be the tissue including the sockets and the T's could be individual or bridged that they will be in a separate STL file. When we choose this option, it's most of the time, it's good to have um, the, the, the printing, it will be the option of production because we do maintain the minimum thickness for the base. The other option we have is monoblock. Monoblock is where we will end up with a STL file, a one piece where the tissue and the base are all combined in one STL file. And typically this is something we use for trying dentures or while we're waiting for the healing time if the patient is having a full mouth reconstruction. The other two options based with artificial teeth, manual or milled reduction, these are usually uh, will not maintain the minimum thickness on the base, and it could be sometimes we do not have that luxury to have a, enough space on the tissue under the teeth, and we could control that by milling that case. So going with the base with design teeth, and then we will select all the artificial teeth here from um, on the top. It's it by default will be selected. And then you can choose the library or we will select it later. And then we will have to bridge all these T's because today I'm going to bridge it. You could also segment this bridge into four, four and four, or you can just have two. It depends if you're printing and your printer has a small platform, you may need to consider having smaller sections to fit in the, the printed uh, material. And uh, this is about the order form. We're going to go to the actual design now. So I'm going to go right click to design. Everybody can see the design now is launching. It will take just a minute. Here we go. Perfect. Uh, awesome. All right. So we have today for today's webinar, I prepared a lower denture to design and the opposing is a permanent dentition. So we're just going to uh, go with this case. And the, the first thing to do is a model analysis where we're going to select the occlusal plane. So we're going to go and choose a three point definition and that will be giving me the option that we will place one point on the posterior segment and one on the anterior, another one on the posterior. And this will populate for me the occlusal table. We have two planes here, the sagittal and the horizontal. And I will just come with the mouse and turn off, turn it back up, turn off the opposing. And uh, having the occlusal rim on, it will help me to bring in the, the, uh, the setup a little bit closer. Again, this is not permanent. We have the option to move this plane later when we get to the teeth setup. So just having it more or less a good place to start is, is here, a good point. Next thing is going to be the characteristic points. Uh, here we will go with the mandibular points. Three shape is a very nice system. It guides you and helps you. If you look on the left, you have all these options to follow. So the retromolar pad center, just going to expand this, clear all, start again. Retromolar pad center one, the buckle and the lingual. And we have central ridge point. 
it's nice to have the lines done and the ability to see the texture scanning. So I could just use them as a guidance for my point setup. Mandibular points are done. Since we only have one arch, we're gonna go next to de draw the boundaries of the lower jaw. In this step here, we can just um, activate the pencil by coming with, to the draw outline box here. When it's highlighted in blue, the pencil shows up and then we will just go over and draw the line quickly. And going forward, we do not go back. We just continue. If we do mistakes, it's best just to finish up the loop. And then we can come back and fix it. Once it's fixed, I can right click on any of these T's and do fast edit line. And I could come and draw the line. Again, this is not the final denture base. This is just the border. So if we want to just go a little bit here, we can fix it. And here, definitely, we need to go up. Moving next will be our insertion direction. This takes a second here to load. At this point, I usually turn off the texture scanning. And I would like to see the undercut depth. So tilting this case and looking at it from the, the um, set from view, and just to capture whatever undercut we can see and the maximum surface, we want to make sure we give this denture a good insertion with the minimum undercut retention and possible. So set from view, we will click on the set from view and this will give us the draw for the denture. We can see here that we have a bit of undercut on the right and the left. You could balance it by moving these arrows. And if there is a heavy undercut, which would be anything in the orange and the red color, we will come and block it in the next step with the wax trimming and the survey. So when I come to the wax trimming, there is uh, the tool to use will be the wax knife. And with the smooth tool, we will just go and add a little bit to cover the heavy spots. And you can increase the wax knife just a bit to cover the heavy retention. That's good. Moving next to our <clears throat> Um, next point here where we have to load our libraries. So Tree Shape has, uh, I'm going to expand this window here. Now that with the new software, you could see the libraries. So most of you will have the free libraries that they come with Tree Shape, the Conjoler and the Nobilium. If you have any other libraries, uh, you could activate them by contacting the provider, for example, then supply calls are some of them you will not be able to generate the STL for the T's unless you buy it. However, the free library is available for you at the download center when you go to dental uh, system control panel and download the libraries. Just to keep in mind, these libraries are very big files, so it's good to download once in, in one time. So just download the conjular save and download the next library later on. Just don't over, uh, over download <laughs> at the same time. So today I'm going to choose my uh, Dense Plot Digital High Characteristic Genus. And uh, you can see here we have different uh, sizes for this library. And you can see the change and uh, different shapes and the different sizes are chosen in this down drop down. So I'm going to go with the balance, uh, th this library. Once I choose my library, I'll hit apply. And at this point, I do have the choice to change it to any other libraries. But let's just go with this one. It will take a little long to load the library because um, this is the whole piece. 
And following the tools left to right simply, I start with the main occlusal plane adjustment. Again, this is where I said at the beginning in this step, if you guys remember, that was not very important to have the occlusal plane in the perfect spot because this is where I can come and move it. Let's minimize the library now that we selected it and come to do our big adjustment. So I'm gonna come here and lift this up a little bit, move it down and then rotate it. As again, as you see, we can, you have different tools to work with. So if I move my red dot, I could tilt it up a little bit. And then from this side again, we can tilt. And then you can also move it backwards. These are the small adjustments we can do. Other than that, you can also move up and down with using the green and the blue arrow. So if I just come here to the blue arrow, I could come a little bit to the left. And then the green arrow goes up and down. Okay, it's a little bit of a lag here, but it's all good. Next tool is the arc setup tool. Just bring it up a little bit more. All right. Next tool is the arc setup tool. And this tool is uh, has the option to use choose the symmetric design. So when I come with the mouse and I hover over any uh, on the T's, it will move for me the group of T's in, in one time. So let's say I'm going to be here on the first premolar, so I could move the whole group symmetrically and it automatically will readjust the alignment of the T's together. So a nice thing, this is a good uh, tool because then you can move them by maintaining the curvature and the alignment for the, the adjacent T's with keeping the contact in between them. So if I come to the anterior group, I could move them up or down in a group. If I go in this posterior segment, it depends where you look from, you could bring it up and down. If I uncheck the symmetric design, it will just move one at a time, one part. So that means, let's say I want to just move this up, then I could just move one side. Looking at everywhere here, we uh, have the other tool which is the next tool we're, we're not highly I use, but it's good to know it's a setup tool similar to the arc setup, but it does not automatically readjust. So if I move these tools here, it will not realign and readjust the adjacent T's to come close to it. So let's see here, we probably need to come down a little bit. We're just too high in occlusion, all right. So moving next, the tool that was highly used and um, most modifications could be done easily and the individual setup tool. So on anterior side, we have different um, options. If we go with the blue dot, it will bring it up. The green dot bring it sideways and the yellow one changes. The um, keep in mind, if you're using carded T's, you got to be careful on the, the green and the yellow dot because they will change the size and the, the size, the T's and the height. And you don't want to change that if you're ordering carded preset manufactured T's. We are printing this, so we don't care. We could do any adjustments we need. So if I'm going to come to right uh, to any of these options, right click with the mouse and bring to mirror plane, it will just shift it for me. And again here, bring to mesial, it will shift. So on these uh, T's, we have all the setup that will bring it into contact to the adjacent all the way to the mesial. Could keep doing this. Also on the posterior side, we have a few more options. So if I turn off the opposing, we have, turn off the occlusal table. 
We have uh, extra tool, extra dots here. We have the pivot tool, which will keep one point of contact, as you can see, but will tilt for me the tools within the socket. So this tool is the also good, especially using it against the opposing, the opposing arch. Opposing means like we're doing two dentures. At this point, it's it's not very important because we're not so we're just moving the teeth around. Uh, so these are the tools. We have also the morphing tool where we could uh, just uh, add and change the characteristic of these uh, cusps, and we can also enhance the um, the teeth in the buckley or whatever we like to do here. So all these options we have from left to right from the beginning big changes all the way down to smaller changes. Moving forward to the mandibular base. So here we come to the denture base design. As I mentioned earlier, that uh, drawing the line for the base was not that mandatory because this is where we can come and adjust. It. And this line will be the final denture baseline. So uh, I, write, I can right click on any of these dots, again, to do the fast edit line. And this is where I could turn on the texture back on and just follow the line. And you can spend a good time here to make sure your denture base is at the right order. You have a little bit of a lag. Usually my mouse is a bit smoother, but I'm sure you guys will have a better luck on drawing. I'm gonna be happy with this line I have. And the next option is the window. In this case, we don't need to open any window. It's mostly used maybe for partials. And this option here is the draw relief zone. Let's say if we have a bone or a torah, we want to make a relief so the denture doesn't pinch into that section. So you can just draw the relief and that will lift up the denture base by 0.15 millimeter. Denture base thickness is an important value to know about, and this is could be determined by the resin you're using. Most companies, two millimeter will be sufficient, but again, this is something you need to follow with the manufacturer. So what base thickness will be applied on the borders of the denture and in the thin spots within the palatal area? Moving down to the gingiva aesthetic, we have different preset um, shapes and styles. We have the delicate, we have the natural looking gingiva, and we have the intense. And if I click on the custom settings, I could see the changes that will be applied. So if let's say I would like to have a, a deeper interdental papilla length, I could increase this value to see the last third box and the interdental papilla type the widths. And again, these are most of the aesthetic things you can change. I'm going to go choose today my natural looking um, tissue and uh, we'll hit re uh, preview to see what we're going to get. Uh, one more thing to mention, drill compensation is this showing up the box is unchecked. Because we're printing this, we don't want that drill compensation to be on because there is no drill, it's a printer. If we are doing the uh, milling, this has to be turned on just so you can get the right strategies and the calculations for the mill and uh, the tip of the burst to be calculated according to that drill compensation. This takes a few minutes to load the tissue. And it's nice about the improvement with the gingiva aesthetic. We used to do this all manually back in 2017, 2018, 2019. So now we have preset values that we could just adjust it with a slider as you see here. Usually the most time it takes here because it's putting all the details together. 
once it's done, I'm going to turn on the tissue and we can see what we got. All right, so this is the. All right, so this is my uh, denture tissue loaded up and um, we're going to go to the next step. In here, we are going to work on the connectors in the order form. If you guys recall, I have selected base with the T's bridged together, and that will be the time where I'm gonna work on my connectors. So I'm gonna turn off the tissue to see what the application is going to do. The connector settings by default, I usually go to the minimum 70, 70 and 60. This is the minimum that you can get to for the connector settings. And then you can also apply the, the different settings if you like. It's good to test it, but you will see what it will do. It basically connects all the T's together in one bridge because I chose one bridge and it will cover up for us the interdental pupil and then proximal area up to the 70%. If you wanna cover up more, you can go higher in value. But by default, these are good numbers to remember. As you see here, we got the, the connectors all applied and if we want to go ahead here, do any sculpting on these connectors, sometimes like if I want to go and hide a little bit the area in between uh, the anterior section so we don't see that big connection, the, and could tell this is a denture, so sometimes the patient doesn't want to show it. So we can just clear up this area or with the minus tool, you can come and just make it more open just to give that natural look. Let's turn off the tissue completely. In the posterior area is fine because that rounding will cover up the connection side, but this is where you can add or remove and smooth the tissue. Other options we have here, uh, we can add attachment. For example, if you were doing a lower denture for Lucitone, it requires a uh, a, a sprue to run around, you can add that here, the attachment. So you can go to attachment, choose um, in the attachment group, you can do the parametric shape. And um, once you choose go. cylinder, and then you can do view in direction, and then you can come here and place the attachment and run the bar. Uh, again, I'm not going to apply that. I just want to show you guys what it what it is. And then you can just move this bar here and run the attachment. Now, where did it go? It's hiding on me. <laughs> okay, so let's see here. I'm just going to delete it. Okay. So, option, another option is the... Uh, the cone right hand smoothing. So this is the 0.5 millimeter. Again, this will uh, cut down the contact between the opposing and the, the denture teeth. So if I apply this, you will see that it's going to just minus the area that it's touching. It will not add, it will just deduct. So it will just reach to the opposing dentition and maintain that contact point. Next thing is to sculpt the denture base. This is where we could grab our tool with the spray wax and add, if we wanna cover more of the tissue area here. Also, you can use the morphing tool by just using it to slide up and cover up to the connector area. Maybe that's a bit too much. That's fine. We can come back and smooth it by the small tool. You have the radius here in a big one. I do have a bit of a lag, so my mouse is just not doing the best job, but I'm confident you guys can do this. Okay. 
I'm gonna, just gonna go forward and let's use this tweezer. Just filling the gaps. Also, it's a good place for us to, if we wanna bulk up any of the tooth, uh, the root eminence, we can also bulk it up in here by adding a little bit of uh, tissue material. Let me turn off this minimum thickness model antagonist so I can work better on my tissue because that's the most aesthetic part that you can see. Okay. In this section also is where you do wanna go and smooth around the denture borders to, especially on the lower, you don't wanna have these big rounded areas. So the borders, this is where you can come and smooth around the denture border, especially in these folded areas. It's nice to have a clear, nice STL file. So your printer doesn't jam, your milling machine doesn't crop up. So it's just good to spend a little extra time on on these areas that they are not so easy for the machine to process. Okay, so a lot can be done. I'm limited with the time, but you could spend a good time making a really nice denture. I'm just gonna show you again, the other feature we have is the uh, stippling wax. So if I wanna give any texture, I could just grab the mouse, left click and hold, and I'm just dragging along. And this is where we can add a texture. So there is a lot of different options if you can play with them, but I will go with the fine type one. And the, the height, I usually like to go below, so it's not very prominent. And you just click on the play button and you will see it will apply that little texture. Again, some materials, they do have the fiber in it, so you don't need to, to add any texture. But if you have some material that's very opacious and they're a little bit fake looking, you do wanna add some texture, you can do it here. And then you can come and smooth a little bit over it so it's not very thick. That is for stippling. The third option or the last one is the ID tag. So um, I don't know if it's mandatory to add a name, but if you do wanna add a name, usually it's a good place to put it here on the inside the lingual side. So you click on the plus sign and, and you can add it at the end of the denture by, by moving it here. Once you have the placement and you're happy with it, you just click play. Again, a lot of people say what will happen, this food's gonna trap in here. You can, after it's processed, you can bring, uh, take some cold, cold uh, clear acrylic and fill in the, the grooves and polish it after. So you don't give that um, denture without uh, finished, or if somebody complained, you can just do that. All right, uh, this is what we got. We're gonna move next to, the step where we are going to do the coupling mechanism. Again, this what it, this is our this is where we're going to have um, turn off the tissue so you guys can see what is going to happen. So we pick this library. This library has the T's and the roots. So the, in the coupling mechanism where it's going to delete and reshape the underside portion of the T. So um, first change is the angle. So first thing to do in this step is turning on the angle. So this angle I have here, it should be tilted buckly to see the other angle of the T's. Okay. So there is usually a purple shadow here, which I don't know why I don't have it, but you will, probably see it in your software, that purple shadow, it will be the same angulation. So what it does, the coupling angle, it will show you the angulation, how the teeth are gonna fit into the denture base, the angle that it's gonna be inserted into it. 
So the coupling depth, the two values we need to pay attention to, the coupling depth is the uh, how deep the teeth are going to penetrate in the denture base. And that's based on where the edge of the tissue lines up feeding the denture teeth. So the most shallow we can go here is one millimeter and the deepest we can go is three millimeter. And that all depends on the material you're using and the bonding method to connect the teeth to the base. The angle is that angle. So if since I have the uh, one all bridge together, I'll just keep my angle as parallel as to this socket. Uh, if we hit preview, uh, denture base divided into several. Let's see why it's not populating. Maybe the depths. Let's go with 1.5. Sometimes if the deep, oh, Let's change the angle a bit. Okay, sculpt base snap, step to remove gingiva above the teeth. So what I'm having an issue here with probably it's penetrating too much and it's asking me, I thought I didn't segment this, but maybe when I was playing with the order form, it's showing that I have segmented it. Hmm. Okay. Let's fix a little bit in the areas here where we can see what is going on. here. Okay. I could go to sculpt anatomy and grabbing the tweezer. Probably I do have a little bit too much of a uh, This is going to look not so pretty, I think. <laughs> it could be, it's just too much intersecting, but let's see if that will fix it. Those are the errors when you get, you can call us at the tech support and we will fiddle around and help you. <laughs> so if I go next. It's just loading up here while it's loading. Um, I will see if we have any, it's getting to the end here. I'm almost done. Last part will be the pre-manufacturing. Awesome, all right. So that did generate. So most likely it was just penetrating too much into the tissue. So I went back and fixed it. So I helped the software by, by generating what I what uh, we needed. So little uh, things to mention about pre-manufacturing. Again, unchecked read compensation because we are printing. Glue space is set at 0.10. That's pretty sufficient. Again, you're going to do some testing and printing and gluing and see if you need it more or less, but that's the amount that it's safe to have to bond the teeth into the tissue. The base and uh, the minimum thickness under the teeth is 0.8. So this is where I said, it, since I selected base with design teeth, it will maintain the minimum thickness of the base of the denture at 0.8. So the software automatically is going to generate for me base and not create a hole. So that means my denture base should be at, at the thinnest spot is 
some people ask a lot about that and that's what it means. If we hit uh, next, that should generate for us the tissue and the teeth in bridge and the one monoblock case also always comes generated with the STL file. It takes a second here until it generates and uh, simply you click uh, F7 to generate CAM and F4 to explore CAM. Hope you guys learned a lot in this video. It always takes a little bit longer here because this is the final <clears throat> generation for the STL file. Now we're generating the tissue. Okay, so it could be there is a lag, I'm not sure, but it usually gets stuck around this area. So for... We have one question, Anish, I don't know while this is loading, if you want to answer it. How do you do a class two or class three setup? Oh, great. Good, good question. So for class two and class three, where we need to lock one arch and uh, bring the uh, lower arch forward, depends if it's a class three is protrusion. Uh, good uh, to, you can do that by, uh, in the smile library, when we nest, when we put, when you import the smile library, if you remember in this section, after we did the surveying, uh, you can right click on the entire dental the, the, the library and it will lock for you the upper arch and you can slide forward the lower arch. So um, it does not show on, on one arch, unfortunately, this uh, feature is new. I mean, new, it was released, I think in dental, dental system 2020. Uh, but it works on when you're doing both denture upper and lower. So all you do is you right click at the very beginning when you, you load the library and you lock the upper arch, it will be an option. And then you can slide the lower arch. So class three is you bring it forward buckley. Class two is bring push it back. You will know the classes. Does that answer your question? I hope that that does, but we'll see. Here we go. Let's see. Yes. Good question. Thanks, Heath. And thank you for your question. Okay. So I'm going to just, I already generated one file. So you guys know how it will look. It's just a regular STL file that will uh, be generated. I could uh, show you what it's going to look like. Let me just open. So every time you design with three shape, the file gets generated and saved in the manufacturing directory. Aha, uh -huh. so now it generated. Let me share my screen back again with you guys. Here we go. This is what we have uh, designed. Could have been nicer, but for a quick video, these are the artificial teeth and the gingiva. So if I turn off the, um, the model, this is my denture. When I close it, now uh, you will see it will just populate the design and right click, advanced, generate, F7 or shortcut is F7 on your keyboard. 
it will take a minute and I will show you quickly the SCL files. While that's loading, I just want to let everybody know that we do have hands-on three shape design courses that are located at our Wakefield, Massachusetts Technology Center. It's a beautiful little area, 20 minutes out of Boston, very close to the Logan Airport, close to Salem, Massachusetts. And we have had quite a few successful classes there um, doing hands-on design. We are limited space. We only take about 10 people at a time so we can give you that extra special care and training that's needed um, to be successful at the shape design. I will be launching our next poll question and that will let you know, um, it'll give you a yes or no if you'd like to join us. And then once a new course comes available, somebody will get in touch with you and let you know the dates. They're gonna be early in 2024. Oh, nice. Okay, so uh, what do the cost? Grand question for you. So this is the denture teeth bridged together and that's how the STL file does look like. So uh, thank you guys. This was my webinar. Now this uh, the, the uh, design is finished. Hope that was helpful. Again, it's a quick little, little demo for you to see what we uh, can do with the denture design module. And um, again, feel free to send us some questions if you have. We also can, you can, we can be reached at um, the email. I'm gonna move the podium now to uh, Fran so we can talk a little bit more of what we do at Design Tech Support Team. Okay, so we have the tech support team. We do training and repair. Yeah, so part of it is, you know, first arm is education. And then anytime you purchase any type of equipment with us, there is a training session that our technical support will contact you on and be able to set up time where they give you actual one-on-one -on -one training, whether it be a piece of equipment or software. We also support that software throughout. So if there's any issues or difficulties or you need a little bit of extra help, all you do is give our support team a call and they are there to help you and get you through it till 8 p.m., I believe, Eastern time, if I'm not uh, correct, Anish, because you're on the West Coast, so you can let them know. Yeah, yeah, support hours, 8 to 7, and that's the number, 800-496. And we, you can reach us by uh, email chat, or we, we also have a good way you can reach us by sending us an email that will generate a ticket. Uh, and then we can get back to you. So you can email Zon support at henryshine.com. We also have a repair facility that we will give loaner equipment and we fix it while your real equipment is on under repair. It could be at the provider or it, we could just repair it ourselves. So good to know about that. A lot of equipment, we do the repair faster than the dealers do. And we also have over 15 vendors and partners and uh, over 35 CAD CAM products, Tree Shape, Asiga, Amangerba, and so on and so forth. Also, we have um, uh, lots of experience, 88 years. Who? that's a long time. This is the team, this is us. Um, here we have the tech team and the management team, the, um, the service techs and the repair guys and uh, the, um, the educators and everyone in here. Thank you very much for participating in our presentation today. If you guys again have any questions, feel free to reach. 
Yes, is there any free to type them in? And Anush, I, I want to thank you so much for joining us again. I want to let you know what's happening on Zon Academy Academy up next. This is our last lecture of 2023. So we want to thank you all for joining us. But we have many new exciting um content that's coming to you in January. Uh, a lot coming from Desktop Health with Flexera Smile Ultra Plus. Um, also a uh, new polishing equipment. Uh, to name just a couple. We're also ramping up our ballroom at Lab Day Chicago. So take a look at our lectures, okay? They will be taking place from Thursday, February 22nd through Saturday, February 24th. And those lectures are available for you to view and sign up. Um, if you are interested in taking advantage of Section 179 on your taxes, that means being able to write off any large equipment purchases, um, you can do that before the end of the year. Just contact your Zon representative if you do have a wish list. And you could also take care of our financing, financing options like Route 66. So you can give our Zon team a call and they can put you in touch with the right people to get you that equipment before the end of the year. Um, again, we do have hands-on courses on three-shaped design available to you at our Wakefield facility starting early in 2024. So stay tuned to that. And if you have any questions on any of it, please don't hesitate to reach out to any of us. We'd be happy to give you all the information that you need. I want to wish everybody a wonderful holiday season and a very happy and healthy, successful 2024. Thank you so much for joining us here on Zon Academy. Thank you, Fran. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Have a happy holidays. Thank you, Anush. Bye, all. Bye-bye.